Hey guys, it's Miss Baker. Uh, we are going to start on page 102 today. What is frame of reference? I will remind you that I am at home, so you will hear my dogs and all sorts of other crazy things, so please ignore it. Okay, so when you look at this picture, picture I want you to think about ways that you can tell me what is currently happening. What can you see is going on right this minute? Okay, what can you guarantee is going on? Okay, now here's the second picture. Now you see a second picture. What do you see was actually happening? So first of all, you see that the ball has dropped from being suspended in the air down to the boy's hand, which is right here. Okay, I'm going to try and turn this on so I can actually see a pen. Okay, so you see the ball here and you see the ball here. This ball has dropped down. Now in science, remember the deal is we must be able to measure everything. You must be able to use numbers to prove things have happened. And what we can do with this is we can measure this distance right here and then this distance right here to show the change, right? Another thing you can look at is this girl. How does she change? Does her position change? Okay, a third thing you can look at is this bus stop sign. This bus stop sign is not in the second picture. So what that tells you is that the bus was moving. So we know that the ball dropped. We know that the bus is moving. We don't really know which way. We don't know what else is going on, but we know those two things have happened. Now, remember, motion is how things change in relative, relative to each other. So again, you must be able to measure those changes. Okay, so how we compare motion is we use something called a frame of reference. With a frame of reference, clues are often given to you by looking at other objects in your surroundings. Normally, you think of walls or signs as not moving or as being stationary objects. When you do these, you use the walls or signs as a frame of reference. Now, when I'm driving, I am always looking at the trees that are attached to the ground, I'm looking at the signposts, I'm looking at the houses to assess how fast I'm going. Now I've driven a long time, so I don't ever think much about looking at the speedometer because I understand how fast my car is going. But I'm always using these frame of references that are attached to the ground. Now, there's another frame of reference that you can use other than something attached to the ground. So I want you to think about if you are in a car and that car is going down the highway at 65, 70 miles an hour. You're going too fast to utilize anything attached to the ground to see how fast you're going. I want you to think about what you actually use to assess how fast you're going. Okay, when I'm driving, I'm using the other cars to assess how fast I'm going. I always want one car to be going faster than I am. The reason I want that is I want the police to go after that car and not after me. When I do that, I know somebody is going faster than me. So if one car is moving farther ahead than me, that means the car is going faster. So for me to be able to tell that car is going faster, especially if it's in front of me, the back end of that car is getting smaller. So if the back end of a car is getting bigger based on where I am, that means I'm going faster than them. So I want to slow down. There's plenty of times that cars speed up and you can't see a car speeding up easily, but you can tell that the rear end of the car is getting smaller. 
but if the car in front of you is braking and slowing down, you're going to see brake lights. But more of what you're going to actually see is the car is getting bigger in comparison to you. That is using something other than a signpost or a house to tell frame of reference. That is using the vehicles around you. Okay, so just want to preface this with the fact that this video is from a, a show called Doctor Who. It is totally fake, so don't worry about the statues are not coming alive. The premise behind this is that there are things called the crying angels, and or excuse me, the weeping angels. And weeping angels are actually aliens, but the deal with weeping angels is they are, cannot move if you are looking at them. So I thought this was a pretty good video talking about when you're thinking about how do you know something is moving. All right, think about that idea of a car. If it's coming, if it is slowing down and you're, you're behind it and the car is slowing down, the rear end of that car is going to get bigger. Okay, and we can measure that. We can actually see that. We normally just adjust with our brains. And if the car is going faster than us, and again, it's moving away from us, the back end of the car is going to be smaller. So think about that. Now, I'm going to kind of speed through this video, but what I want you to do is tell me when, and I want you to think about, how do you know this angel is moving? Okay, so at this point, you can tell that the angel has moved her hands from her, her head straight in her hands to turning her head. Now, let me back it up just a minute. And I will show you again. Okay. So here her head is in her hands. You can see that they are attached. Okay. At this point you can actually tell that there is actually a distance between her hand and her face. That is measurable and we can tell that there was motion there. Now I'm going to speed this up again. See if I can get a hold of it. Okay, so here's the next piece. Tell me how you know that she has moved. Okay, so she has turned entirely around. You can see that. We can actually measure that. And if you look at the size of her head, her head is actually getting bigger. Now, her head is not actually expanding. She's coming closer to you. So as her position changes towards you, she looks like she's getting bigger. That's the way you can tell something is getting closer. This next slide is showing she's even closer. You can tell that her head is even bigger. Okay, now at that point, let's go back here. And again, totally fake, guys. At this point, just pay attention. Let it finish loading. I'm going to pause it. Now, you see, look at the size of her face. Oh, ah, sorry, guys. Let's get this back. I don't want to. Hey, I'm Alex Arnold, and it's worth the work of my nonprofit. I'm back. All right, let's get back here. Sorry, guys. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so look at the size of her face at this point. She's fairly close up to you. Now, hopefully, I can get this to play and pause really quickly. Ugh. Again, did not do it. Let's go over here. Let's try this one more time, guys. I might have to give up on this one. Okay. So, again, she's close up to you. She's looking at you. I'm going to play. And then I'll pause, hopefully. Okay. Now, did her head get bigger or smaller at this point? At this point, her head has gotten smaller. 
we can tell she has backed up because her head has gotten smaller. What we're using is her head size as our frame of reference. She is moving. We can tell that she's moving because her head got smaller. That means she's backed up. Now let's try planting one more time. Oh, okay, I, there's no way I can get that other one. Okay, so her size tells us that she's moving either closer or farther away from us. That's using an object that is moving as a frame of reference. Okay, so when you're looking at an object and you are moving and the object you're looking at is moving, if the two objects are going in opposite directions, they're moving, both of them are moving away from each other or towards each other, you're going to add the speeds together and that's how fast the other object looks like it's moving towards you okay or away from you okay so what I want you to remember is if the objects are moving opposite of each other you're going to add their speeds together and that's the speed that one object looks like the other one is moving okay I know that sounds weird but you'll see in a minute now if they're going in the same direction you're going to find the object that has the fastest speed and you're going to subtract the speed of the object that's going slower okay so imagine that you've got two cars you're driving on the highway and you're you're at the same speeds so let's say I am driving at 60 miles an hour and you are driving at 60 miles an hour if we're going in the same direction 60 minus 60 is 0 now you look like you are not going anywhere compared to me and I am look I look like you're not going I'm not going anywhere to you I know that sounds crazy but um, if you're just focusing exactly on me it doesn't look like either of us are going anywhere but if we are actually in cars, different cars, and we're moving in the opposite directions, then you're going to add them together. So if I'm going 60 miles an hour north, and you are going 60 miles an hour south, and we are going in opposite lanes and we're going to pass each other, you look like you're going 120 miles an hour to me, and I look like I'm going 120 miles an hour to you. Okay, so this is your next page on your work. Okay, so let me change this so I can actually write again. All right, so I'm going to take my keyboard off here so ho hopefully I can write this correctly for you. All right, so the objects are these, okay? We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six objects. This first one right here, the guy standing on the mountain, is what we're going to call the hitchhiker. The guy floating in his inner tube is the velocity of the river. You've got a guy running, that is velocity of the jogger. Remember, subscripts tell us specific things. The, we've got an airplane, the velocity of the airplane. We've got a hot air balloon, a velocity of the hot air balloon. We've got the velocity of a rowboat, and we've got velocity of a car. Now, remember, if they are opposites, you're going to add them and if they're going the same direction you're going to subtract them so what I want to do is I want to start on the car so okay so first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the car. So this is what our frame of reference is from. Now we're going to look at the car right here. 
and we're going to look at the hiker. So we're going to put this information. So the hiker is going at zero meters per hour, and the car is going at 30. Actually, this is miles per hour. The car is going at 30 miles per hour, and the hitchhiker is going at zero miles per hour. Now, you need to look at the arrows. Are the arrows going in the opposite direction or the same direction? On these two, they're going in opposite directions. So opposites add. So we're going to do 30 plus 0. 30 plus 0 equals 30. Now, you don't have to write 30 plus 0. I'm just making sure you know what the heck is going on. Okay, so let's look at this next one. So car and car. So imagine there are two cars going, driving right next to each other, going in the same direction. So the question is, do you add them or subtract them? Well, if they're going in the same direction, you're going to subtract them. So 30 miles per hour minus 30 miles per hour is zero. So 30 minus 30 equals zero. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is the car versus the river. That's this guy right here. So these two arrows, are they going in the same direction or are they going in the opposite direction? Well, these guys are going in the opposite direction, so what you're going to do is you're going to add them. So 30 plus 6, 30 plus 6 equals 36. So from the car's point of view, the guy on the river is going 36 miles per hour. The guy on the river, his point of view is this car is going 36 miles per hour. And the car is coming towards him. So let's look at the car and the velocity of the rowboat. Okay, so the next one is the car and the rowboat. Well, we know the car is going 30. And the rowboat, the rowboat is going in the same direction. So if it's going in the same direction, do you add or subtract? Well, based on what we decided, you were going to subtract. So the next question is, do you subtract 2 from 30 or 30 from 2? You need to find the biggest number. The biggest number is 30. So 30 minus 2 equals 28. Okay? So the next one is the car and the jogger. The jogger is right here. So the car is going 30 in this arrow, and the jogger is going 4 in the opposite direction. So we now know when you're going in opposite directions, you're going to add. So we're going to say 30 plus 4 equals 34. So from the jogger's point of view, the car is going 34 miles per hour. From the car's point of view, the jogger is going 34 miles an hour. So now the next one, we're going to set, look at the car and the balloon. Okay, so are they going in the same or the opposite direction? From what this says, it's going in the same direction. And when they're going in the same direction, you subtract. You need to find the largest number, which is 30. 30 minus 3 equals 27. So from the car's point of view, the hot air balloon is going 27 miles per hour. From the hot air balloon's point of view, the car is going 27 miles an hour. Now let's look at the plane. You've got the car and the airplane. Are they going in opposite directions or are they going in the same direction? They are going in the opposite direction. So if they're going in the opposite direction, you're going to add. So you're going to say 30 plus 490 and that equals 520. So from the car's point of view, the airplane is going 520 miles an hour. 
And from the plane's point of view, the car is going 520 miles per hour. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to finish this worksheet. Then I would like you to take this information that you've just learned and I would like you to write the summary on the bottom of your first page of notes. Now remember the summary, the goal is for you to give me a short and sweet, explain what you learned, then explain how you can apply it in the real world. Okay?